Good evening, everybody. We left off on page 15. Chapter 2. Three months later. DNA results are back, CSI Nikki McAllister said as she halted her jogging in front of Kiri's office. As usual, Kiri had just put her bag in her office and was leaving to go find her CSIs and detectives. How long have you been here, Nikki? Kiri asked, looking at her watch. It's only 0600. I just got here. Reggie finished up the DNA results last night. Kiri nodded, looking at the electronic writing pad in Nikki's hand. Well, what do we have? Nikki showed her the pad. Kowalski's a match. We've got him, Kiri said with a smile. Let's get him in an interrogation room and show him what we have. Between the DNA evidence on the murder weapon, the motive Kowalski had for murdering his cheating wife, the footprint that matched his tennis shoe on the crime scene, his fingerprints on the murder weapon, and all around the crime scene, the aggression issues discovered in his last choice, and the fact that his alibi didn't check out, but rather pointed to him being home during the time of the crime, Kowalski didn't have a chance. I love open and shut cases, Nikki said with a triumphant smile. Don't count on it yet. You know how things can change, Kiri said knowingly, but her smile not faltering. When Justin gets here, tell him to come find me. I need, I need him to go over the drone images he found yesterday. Nikki nodded. Will do. Greg texted and said he'd be a little bit late today. He's got a doctor's appointment. Okay, Kiri said with a nod. I'll go tell PD to get Kowalski into that interrogation room. Sounds good, Kiri said, and Nikki took off for the elevator. Just as the elevator opened for Nikki, CSI Sarah Lee got off, and Kiri met her halfway. Justin's on his way in, Sarah said instantly. I was looking at the digital analysis of that tape last night on my computer, and I found an inflection point. Inflection point where? Kiri asked, highly curious. Let's go to the AV lab. They walked at a brisk pace to get there, and then Sarah called up her account on the computer. She asked, accessed the sound file containing the analysis of the tape they had found at the crime scene. Listen to this part, Sarah said, as Kiri stooped over her chair to watch the screen. The visual analysis of the sound waves appeared as the speakers blared. And if you want her back, deposit... Sarah paused it. You heard that, right? Kiri nodded. The noise in the background. Did you narrow it down? Definitely. Here's what it came down to, Sarah said, and then clicked another file on the screen. It loaded and played. It sounded like a burst of static. You cleaned it up? Sarah nodded. Here's what I ended up with, she said, and accessed the third file. It was a cell phone ring, playing an alternative song. Recognize the song? I never went through the alternative music stage, Sarah. Enlighten me. It's an old song. Armitage Shanks, by a band called Green Day, from the 1990s. Kiri raised an eyebrow. App companies record what rings people download, do they not? They do. And between the records we have for who Victoria was with in 10 hours before she disappeared, and the records of who's downloaded that song for the ring, we should be able to narrow down our suspects to one. Great work, Miss Lee, Kiri congratulated. Go ahead and run it through the system. See if you can get us our one suspect. Justin should be able to track him down with those drone images. Send me something I can forward to the FBI. Sarah nodded. I'm running it through the system right now. Kiri! a voice said from behind her, and she turned to see Detective Spencer sticking his head through the door. Just got another ransom note forwarded to us from the FBI. Deadline's been reduced to ten hours from now. Kiri sighed. She walked toward the door, and Spencer came in and stood by it. Let's use this to our advantage, she said. They're expecting the deposit at Norwich Park, right? Right, ten hours from now. Kiri nodded, processing the information. Okay, well... If we can find this guy, she indicated Sarah's search, we can track him. If we keep him tracked until 10 hours from now and then ambush the kidnappers at the park, we'll have both of them. And we can play them off each other. We'll get them to tell us where Victoria is. Kiri nodded. Okay, let's go with that. And are you going to be the one to explain to Tom why he's going in with the money? Yeah, I'll do that, Kiri agreed. You contact the FBI with our plan. Make sure they want us to play and handle the homicide. That's my job, Spencer said with a smile. Tom's in the waiting area? He's been there since yesterday afternoon. 
if you could encourage him to take a shower, get something to eat, you know. I was planning on it. Thanks, Spence. He smiled and nodded as he walked away. Kiryu headed toward the waiting area. Mr. Goldnitz? Kiri greeted the 40-year-old man sitting nearest his door, nearest the door. His golf shirt and khaki pants were wrinkled from sleeping in the waiting room overnight. Tom stood up. What have you found out? We got another ransom note, she explained slowly. The deadline's been reduced. Tom's face fell. We think we can use this to our advantage, Kiri said immediately. Ten hours from now, we're going to ambush whoever comes to collect the money. We think multiple people will show up for their own protection, but we'll be ready for them. Do you understand, Mr. Golnitz? Tom nodded. You want me to deliver the money so you can capture them, he concluded. Yes, that's exactly right, Kiri said. She sat down and offered Tom the seat next to her. You'd be wearing a protective vest under your clothes, and we, we wouldn't be visible. But there's still the chance. If something goes wrong... We're, we're going to be right there. They won't get away. And we're going to do our best to find Victoria, she said firmly. Tom looked at her, pain in his eyes as he asked, And what if you don't? What if this doesn't work? What if they've got some way to contact whoever's with her and tell them to kill her? If we do nothing, Mr. Golnitz, the po probability increases that one of those what-ifs becomes a reality. We can't make you do this, of course, and don't feel pressured to. This is your decision and no one else's. Tom paused. Do you really think this is going to work? I do, Kiri said confidently. We've done operations like this with the FBI before, and we've pulled them off. What percentage is your success rate? The lieutenant smiled slightly. I haven't calculated it lately, Mr. Golnitz. If you really want me to, I can find out, but I'm sure it's fairly high. He thought for a moment, and then chuckled. The closest I've ever come to being a part of an operation like this was playing video games as a kid. Kiri smiled warmly at him. You'll do just fine if you follow our instructions. Tom buttoned his lip and nodded. All right, if it'll help Victoria... We're going to do everything we can to get her back, Kiri promised again, putting a hand on his arm. I know, he said, folding his arms. With his chin in his fist, he took a deep breath and let it out slowly. Then he looked up. Where should I go now? To the cafeteria, to get something to eat. And you do know about the visitors' beds, right? Yeah, they're on the second floor. That's two floors away from where I need to be. The cafeteria I can do. I'm not asleep in the cafeteria. Kiri smiled sympathetically. She knew exactly how he felt. Go get something to eat. We'll find you when we need you. Ten hours. Right. He nodded. Okay. Thank you, Lieutenant. Believe me, Mr. Golnitz, I'm always glad to help. She watched the man walk toward the elevator. Ten months ago, that was me, she thought. She shook the thought from her head and went to find Nikki. There was a suspect who needed to be interrogated. We'll read more tomorrow.